with little surprise, you can realize that if the graph is planar, we can say more things because planar graphs have a simpler structure and we have more tools to study them. And indeed, let's look at how many colors we need to color planar graphs. This has an application, which is that of coloring maps. So the map that I am sitting in front of here is a very colorful world map. Uh, what I mean is you take a map of, say, the world's countries or the provinces and territories of Canada, and you want to color two regions uh, in different colors whenever they touch each other. So you can actually read the map and uh, regions don't melt together. And this can be represented by a graph where each vertex represents a country and adjacency means that there is a border in common. But let's wait with this application for later and go back to our problem, namely, how many colors do we need to color uh, planar graphs? So perhaps surprisingly, it turns out that there is an absolute number that we know that we can use. Namely, every simple planar graph is six colorable. So whichever planar graph you can imagine to draw, six colors will always be enough to color the vertices in the fashion we want. The proof is similar to that of the previous theorem, uh, but we need the fact that we have shown before that any planar graph has a vertex of degree at most five. This is something we have shown before. If you don't remember it, go back to that result. For now, let's accept that this is true, which it is. So we will use induction on the number of vertices. Of course, if you just have one vertex, the graph is six colorable, no problem. So assume that you have a, a graph with n vertices, n greater than one. And since we're proving by induction, we assume that for all graphs with, for all simple planar graphs with n minus one vertices, the theorem is true. Well, we have our vertex with degree at most five, so we remove it. Then the remaining graph has n minus one vertices, is still simple and planar because we've just removed a, vertex, a vertex. So by the induction hypothesis, this remaining graph is six colorable. And so when we put back our vertex, by the same reasoning as before, it has degree at most five. So it's gonna be adjacent to no more than five vertices but we have six colors available. So even if all these five vertices are colored in different colors, there is a sixth color available for our vertex. Uh, in other words, we can always find a color not used by the adjacent vertices to V that we can color V with. And so every simple planar graph is six color. All right, that was a rather a short proof. Let's now that we've warmed up, let's try to do better. New theorem, every simple planar graph is actually five colorable. We only need five colors, not necessarily six. Proof of this theorem is a bit more uh, demanding, so buckle up. Again, we will uh, do a proof of, of induction, with induction, and the induction is on the number of n vertices, the base case being trivial, since of course five colors are enough to color one single vertex. For the induction step, again we use the fact that our graph G has a vertex with at most degree five. This is a fact we know about planar graphs, simple planar graphs. So if this degree of this vertex is less than five. In other words, if we have a vertex with degrees strictly less than five, then we can play the same game. We remove the vertex, the remaining graph has n minus one vertices, so it's five colorable by hypothesis because we have one vertex less and we are using induction, so we assume that one vertex less means that it is five colorable. Then when we put it back, it will be adjacent to less than five vertices, so one of the five colors will at least be available and we can color our vertex with it. So th that case is just as the previous case, but life isn't always that good. 
because we might have the case where the degree is actually 5. We only know that there is a vertex with degree at most 5, not less than 5. So if the degree is actually 5, the, the vertex v, then this means that v is adjacent to 5 vertices. Uh, this is not the whole graph. I mean, the, the graph continues in all possible directions here, but this is somehow a local shot of my graph. And let's name these vertices v1 to v5. Okay. Now, the what's the naive thing I want to do? If, if I were to say, okay, let's, however I color v1 to v5, I can find a color for v, that's not true. Because maybe I need all the five colors to color v1 to v5, and then there is no color left to color v. So I must somehow prove that I can color v1 to v5 with less than five colors, with maybe four colors. So let's see how that works. So not all of these v1 to v5 are adjacent to each other. If they were, so assume that all of them are adjacent to everybody else, so then we have five vertices that are all adjacent to each other, and this means that we have a complete graph on five vertices, a K5. But if we had a K5 in our graph, then our graph is not planar. Since our graph is planar, we know this doesn't happen. So we know that there are at least two vertices among these five vertices V1 to V5 that are not adjacent to each other. Let's say, I mean, it doesn't matter what we call them, let's say V1 and V3 are not adjacent. Otherwise, renumber the vertices so that V1 and V3 are not adjacent. So we know two vertices are not adjacent because we know there is no K5. Okay, take these two vertices. Now, contract these two edges. So when I contract the edge V1 to V, I get a new vertex here, and this removes, and this vertex will still be adjacent to all other vertices there. Same here, if I remove this uh, edge and contract it, then I will get a new vertex here that's adjacent to the same things. So my graph will look like that, and I will call my new vertex W, and this dot 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 means that I've contracted so that all the vertices that were previously adjacent to V3 and to V1 are now adjacent to W. So what have I done so far? I've taken my degree five vertex, established that two of the vertices adjacent to it are not adjacent to each other, and contracted the edges com uh, that bind these vertices to V. So now I have this thing. This new graph, uh, now where I have contracted two edges and therefore reduced the number of vertices by two has n minus two vertices. But I'm proving by induction on the number of vertices. So I'm assuming that anything that has less than n vertices is good, is five colorable. So this new graph is five colorable. So I can color my uh, resulting graph in five colors. And among them, one color will be the color of W. Maybe it's red for, for visibility, but this is done. Now, this somehow has to help me color my original graph. And for that, I note that what vertices... So, so remember, I had my V1 and V3 that were uh, adjacent to V and then I contracted them. And this means that what were V1 and V3 adjacent to? Well, they were adjacent to V, but otherwise they were only adjacent to whatever W is adjacent to. So V1 and V3 were adjacent to V and to all the vertices uh, to which W is now adjacent because I pulled that together and nothing else. This means that in G, I can color V1 and V3 with the same color, namely the color I used for W. Why is that? Well, I know that V1 and V2 are not adjacent to each other, so that's not a problem. 
I have still not decided which color to color V. But also I know that these other vertices to which V3 and V1 were adjacent to, they cannot be red because in the coloring of um, this new contracted graph, no vertices adjacent to W are red. And the vertices adjacent to W are precisely the ones that I pulled together from the vertices adjacent to V3 and V1. So if red works for W, it will work for V3 and V1. This means now that in my original graph, I can color the vertices in such a way that V1 and V3 have the same color, but still adjacent vertices have different colors. And then I'm done because then since I'm using the same color for V1 and V3, I am satisfied with four colors at most for these V1 through V5, and therefore I have one color available for V. And this concludes the theorem. This was rather a long proof, and you might need to go through it once more, especially this contraction part, to uh, see what really happened. But it was doable, and so now, armed with confidence, we can ask, can we improve this? So, is 5 actually optimal? Do we have a 5 chromatic planar graph? A planar graph that cannot uh, be colored with less than 5 vertices. So. This is a question I cannot under, uh, I cannot answer immediately. Then there probably is an easier question I should start with. Let's start with four chromatic. So K4, as we uh, saw before, is four chromatic. The complete graph on four vertices needs actually four different colors to be colored, and K4 is planar. So I know that I will not be able to prove a three color theorem. I definitely need four colors to uh, color my graph. Uh, and this is actually, this actually happens in real life. So let's look at our previous example with countries and bar borders. So this picture is part of a map of Europe. This is Belgium, this is France, this is Germany, and this is Luxembourg. And you see that they form a complete graph. So any two countries among these four have borders with each other. So these four need to be colored in different colors. But now with five, it's more complicated because K5 is not planar. So I cannot use the same argument. And for a long time, people failed to find an example with uh, where you actually needed five colors to prove that, uh, to, to, to color the vertices in the way you like. So people started thinking that maybe this is actually impossible. And indeed, in 1976, a theorem was proved that every simple planar graph is four colorable. Four colors are enough. Now, proved, some, this was controversial because this was one of the uh, first big theorems, if not the first big theorem, that was proved by a computer. So the way to prove this is that they did a bunch of theoretical work to reduce the uh, proof to checking a huge but finite number of cases, and the computer did this. But now this proof is generally accepted, and we will see later a glimpse into this theoretical work that went into this. But this is in general a very hard uh, theorem and a milestone for modern mathematics, both when it comes to computer proofs and just in general. 